Well, you got a crazy card, Scorpio. This is what came up for you. The Galactic Mushroom. I know, it sounds a little bit Teletubbies. It sounds a little bit Keanu Reeves is going to just start taking a bullet and all the rest of it, but pay attention. The Galactic Matrix is about, if you think about mushrooms, okay, bear with me, Scorpio, for a minute. I mean, I'm no botanist, but they have this kind of fronds. We're talking things that send spores out to make more and fronds out, and it's all a little bit weird, okay? And what this card is about is your own particular divine matrix between you and source, God, spirit, whatever you want to call it. OK, I feel like there is something I feel like there's something you already tried. And this could be in the realms of relationship or career or life purpose. And we will cover all of those three subjects in this reading. I feel like there's something you already tried. OK, and there was no reason in inverted commas why that didn't come off the way you wanted it to do. And that's quite puzzling. You know, it's cognitive dissonance for us humans when we look at it and we think, you know, I put the right amount of effort in. I did the right things. Maybe not at the right time. That's what we're talking here. Also, divine timing. It feels like you have been gathering your fronds, gathering your strength, rethinking. It's like whatever you wanted to do then 2.0 you know it's the new and improved version of events this is complicated it's complex it could be and for some of you it is it's like a web within a relationship and i'm getting channeled very very clearly between you and another person as if you've got like you know if you had a creature that has webs between their claws or fingers or whatever and that is kind of between the two of you and you are both operating within this kind of webbed existence it feels attached to each other so this could it is about relationships you are attached and Scorpio you know what you're like when you are in love or you are in you know full on into something or somebody you're enmeshed in it you're living it and it takes such a lot to get you there you know a Scorpio can has the most amazing emotional control so you can exercise that emotional control until you can't and then when you can't that's it the heart is wants what it wants and a Scorpio's gaze is very intense. You can focus onto what it is that you want here, okay? But there's something that you shot for, that you went for, that was disappointing or you didn't quite get there. It wasn't the right time, okay? It wasn't the right time. And the other card that came up for you, and it's equally as, I mean, this is, this is weird. We've just gone like really weird for Scorpio is the caterpillar. I don't know why it's like cat pillar, but it's like a cat that's also a caterpillar. Who knew? Not me. But it this is about what caterpillars do. And caterpillars metamorphosize, they change. And this is an opportunity coming in. So you can have a chance at this. You have a chance at this. And I think that you already feel that, but at the same time, you also will feel, and I'm gonna choose a different deck for you than the one I chose originally, because it feels different now. Don't know why. We don't always get to say. It feels like the temperature around this is more conducive to growth, okay? Remember as well with the galactic mushroom that while things are all being planted, while things are all growing, while your manifestation is happening, you effectively in the 3D will have no idea. 
and may even you know rue this and be upset about this and why is this not happening yet you're in the middle of a bit of a metamorphosis and that is a really good thing i'm going to take two tarot cards for this we're going to look in this reading at your love life we're going to look at i'd say work life but loosely because i think it's more about life purpose There'll be an extended love reading, there is every month, so if you get to the end and it really, really resonates with you and you want to know more, that's the first link right there in the description box. Okay, I'm feeling the heat off these cards. We are using Mystic Maiden's Tarot, a very scorpionic deck if I ever saw one. By God! We're starting big. We're starting big. That one. Okay. Cripes. Eight of Cups. Straight off the bat. Interesting. Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is kick up the arse planet. It's the planet which says, oh, you know, are you on time? Are you doing this right? Are you doing your working out? Are you drinking enough water? Are you looking after yourself? Do you know your boundaries? Health and safety. Have you thought about this? Have you made an itinerary? Yeah. Saturn is what I call the headmaster of planets. Pisces, as you know, because it's a sister sign to you, fellow water sign, is all about the, well, there are no boundaries, there are no limits, and and also sacrifice and unconditional love. Now, this is interesting. For those of you where this is a relationship, and that's a lot of you, you have moved or you've been in the realms where you love the very bones of this person to the point of sacrifice, you know, to that point of ride or die, unconditional love. It's not always something we get to choose. Sometimes we don't have, well, most of the time, we don't have particular control over that aspect of things, okay? I tell you what I get here as well, and this is weird. See how her dress, I thought her dress was snagged on a branch. And if it was, it would be walking away, but you're partly dragged back. You know, something's tugging away. That's what I feel you might be in the middle of. And for some of you, if this is to do with a career path, it's something you find very tempting. It's something you find, I don't know if it's rewarding, but you find it magnetic. You find it attractive, okay? And yet, at the same time, you don't quite know if it's right for you or not. Then we get the moon. Moon comes in. Of course, as water signs, the moon's always huge because it's lunar energy. It's water energy. It's also the subconscious. And Scorpio, you're all about the subconscious. I'm also saying here what happened in Scorpio season, which we've just had, uh, what went down. And also a year from now, as in not forwards, but backwards. What happened a year ago, this time last year? There's a lot of muck and mystery here for you. What's the heart of the matter, please, for Scorpio? What is the heart of the matter? Let's get to it. Okay, heart of the matter. Can we get to the heart of the matter? God. <laughs> Okay, well that's an interesting little collection. The Knight of Swords, the message, the conversation, possibly the person, possibly air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Accuracy, the Knight of Swords is about a message delivered, it's accurate, it's not particularly forgiving, it's just true, okay? It's neither good nor bad, but it's true. So getting to the truth of something. 
Queen of Swords. Okay, this is really important. I feel almost like, for those of you in a romantic relationship, this is the other person, whether they're an air sign or not, okay? And you are the Queen of Swords. And the two of these are competing for accuracy is the channeled message that I get. That's interesting because I feel like to this point it's been foggy and difficult. And then we get this lovely temperance card that says there are two sides to this but you need to be able to kind of go with both sides at once. At the moment, you're in the middle of a really delicate balance of knowing whether to twist or stick or quit the casino altogether. And for some of you, and this won't be hardly anybody either, there is a casino or playing cards or I'm getting that thing at the casino, you know, with black and red and the ball. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Um, so for some of you, you might have worked in a casino or you went to see a film about a casino. But of course, what do we do in casinos? We gamble, okay? Casinos are for gambling. Okay. The heart of the matter is accuracy. Getting accurate answers. But also, Queen of Swords really 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 sharp boundaries you need your wits about you with this one not gonna lie this person is i'm getting fast and furious i'm getting intelligent sharp edgy witty well if this is about your career path you're looking to break into a world that is full of talented people. And you will really need to bring your A game, okay? Here's the King of Swords. We've now got the Queen and the King of Swords on either side of Temperance. Let's show you the cards. Look at that, okay. These are the two cards we started with. We've got the Queen of Swords here. We've got the King of Swords here. We've got Temperance arbitrating in the middle. Wow. This is someone you need to go toe to toe with. You can't afford to take your foot off the gas at the moment, at the stage that you're in. Sharpen your pencil, Scorpio, whether this is career, whether this is love, sharpen your pencil. You must, in any negotiation, in order to have power, be willing to walk away if needed. Okay, so whether this is your romantic situation, whether this is a work negotiation or a job interview, or even a current situation with friends, family, okay, Scorpios can become very emotionally attached when they do, which is not, takes a lot to get a Scorpio there, but if you, you know what you're like, Scorpio, if you do go there, then you're there, you're in it. You have to go toe to toe with this King of Swords. You have to share the power. Neither one of you can be power heavy, okay? And it's hard because you're both clever, you're both witty, you're both, you're both quite extra. <laughs> okay. Tell us about the inner workings of this. Oh my God. Okay, 
Queen of Wands. Oh shit, wrong one, sorry. Queen of Wands. Now that's interesting. I'm taking a shadow card for her. Now, if you watch me often enough, and if you do, do hit the like button and subscribe to the channel and you will see me more. If you watch me often enough, you will know me and the Queen of Wands have got a bit of beef. Not always. We got the Queen of Swords, we got the King of Swords, we got the Queen of Wands, and we're asking what the kind of inner sanctum is of this situation. If we then get the Queen of Wands for that, I'm looking as to whether this is competition. Because she comes up for me when it's competition. And with the Eight of Cups, you know, and I'm getting that got to know when to fold. It's a country song. Know when to walk away, know when to run. Okay. And know when to actually stay at the table as well whole gambling thing going on which is very strange okay strength fire sign possibly this person uh could be someone you know here okay okay i know what i'm gonna do got a different deck the one i was going to originally use okay my lovelies is she competition is she competition? We get the world. Is this competition, please? Is this competition? If so, how much? <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it is competition at some level. Let me take one more and then we'll talk about what we got for this card. Okay, this is like the inner sanctum that's going on here. It's very mysterious, this. I'm very interested. Okay. God. These two just fell out. Strength and the Four of Pentacles. Right, Scorpio. Your success in this scenario depends on your ability to keep your hands on your purse, to keep your powder dry, to talk to nobody about what you're doing, to have inner strength and resilience, to know your game plan, to know your enemy, and to know who is with you, okay? Let's put them up there. Right. Queen of Wands and what is the inner sanctum of this? We've got the world. So we're in a cycle here. There's been a cycle, like I said, you know, go back to last year, even if it's not the same person, the same list of characters, go back to Scorpio season last year, what's happened since then. Okay, it runs in seasons, what's happening with this. We've got the world, we've got the Two of Pentacles, someone juggling possibilities. And... You could also be juggling possibilities here. Queen of Swords, glad to see her come up. Oh, oh, and look at her. I can't help feeling a certain fairy tale vibe, a certain competitive vibe. Okay. And the Queen of Swords here is, is going to win. You are the Queen of Swords. You are going to win this one. We then have the Page of Wands. I like this. It's like when you get the Page of Wands, it's like a mini kind of junior fire situation. Relighting a fire, lighting a spark under the bonfire that's already there. You are somehow executing some kind of power move that is not just a move, it's real. It's distancing yourself where you need to. And I'm sure this came up for Gemini, I think it was. Distancing yourself where you need to. Not blabbing the farm about your plans at all. 
this queen of wands who is maybe competition could become an ally. You know, there are no stronger allies than people who you couldn't stand when you first knew them. So in some way, you're matched in strength. You've got strength, they've got the strength. It's what you make it, whether you make them friend or foe, okay? You need super discipline here because underneath your exterior you are not half as calm as you look about this there is there's a lot at stake and then we've got the tower here no one handles the tower better than a scorpio and this whole situation you're changing like the caterpillar, okay? Things are all happening below the soil like the galactic mushroom, if I can even say that without laughing, but it's like the galactic mushroom, the divine matrix. You could be manifesting like a mad thing at the moment, making things happen. This is almost kind of bordering on a spell. I don't know what you're doing here, but I admire it and I will, I, will, I say, I admire it and I want to know in the comments section. I might as well not bother with that because you're not going to tell me in the comments section, which is fine. I respect that. And also, I just told you not to blab the farm. So, no, don't put it in the comments section. That probably isn't a good idea. Okay, let's have a look at, I just want a quick look at the shadow of this. The shadow of this is power, I can already tell. You can make such a lot happen, you could become drunk on power here, as we all do. Okay, Ace of Swords. Okay, I get that, totally get that. Jesus, Queen of Swords, third time. I get that too, actually. Yeah, I get all of this. Four of Cups and the Eight of Swords, okay. And the Hierophant, okay got the Hierophant at the bottom and we've got, so don't do reversals on shadow cards, we've got the Chariot at the other end, okay? Chariot riding two horses with one arse, you're going to have to get expert at that at the moment because where you're at with this current situation is really in between worlds as we know and you're bridging and you're sending out seeds and fronds and making something happen almost underground it's amazing but ice because ice is coming into this we've got the hierophant here who is standing in a snowy icy ground okay it's bringing a poem i read on my daily tarot channel this is my same channel but daily tarot readings which was called Spinster by Sylvia Plath. And it's about this ice. Okay, you've got Queen of Swords as a shadow card here. You're riding two horses with one arse and one is like being the ice queen and you may be icing people out because it's necessary. And you've also got the other side of this where you're so icy, iced out yourself, if you're not careful, that you'd never thaw, you know? Ace of Swords as a shadow card is because this situation at the moment... What the heck was that noise? Oh well, some little weird musical alarm just went off. This situation at the moment is not... It's not full of clarity. <laughs> You're like, I know that. There are things you can't know right now. So you're working off what you've got, okay? You can't know them yet. They're not available yet. The Hierophant here is, could be a teacher, a guru, or your own understandings, your own wisdom. It can even be books that you know. It can be wise people but there's few of, they're few and far between and I wouldn't want to be sharing your power with people really 
unless they're really, really good and you know them, okay? So, frosty but not completely iced out. Four of cups, emotionally neutral. Emotional neutrality is gonna help you because being in the fields, you can't see clearly and you need to see clearly with this because you're making a power move. But a Scorpio does not go into battle unprepared. You know that, okay? Eight of Swords. You, even Scorpio, has doubts. So there are some, you have some doubts. And it brings me back to the Eight of Cups at the beginning, the first card, so powerful. This is your power card. You have to be willing, if necessary, to walk away. Scorpio. It's a lot, as they say on Aussie Myths. Okay, in the extended reading, woof, which is an extended love reading, okay, so it's about relationship, it's about this relationship in particular. We're going to use a load of decks out of my tarot basket over here. We're going to look at the Eight of Cups, we're going to look at your person on the other side of it, okay? Pull cards for them, channeled messages, see if they're hiding anything that we can get at and if there's any undiscovered knowledge that we need or that we can have, okay? Fortune favours the brave, Scorpio. Remember that and no Scorpio goes into battle unprepared. You've got this, you're ready for it, but you have to be ready to walk away if needed. Namaste.